I completed the ultimate shopaholic challenge, the 75 day hard style challenge. A loser in Brooklyn made this challenge. She posted on her Instagram. The rules for this challenge were get dressed every day for 75 days, document your daily outfits, don't buy anything new, set your challenge goals or intentions, get creative and rely on your own brain for inspiration, organize and clean out your closet. Did I follow these rules to a T? No. Before we get into this video though, I wanted to say thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring. I'll talk about them in a little bit. I wanna talk about what worked for me, what didn't work for me. I did not buy anything new in these 75 days. I'll talk about what I ended up buying after this challenge was over. Funny, I did a whole video of everything I wanted to buy in the first month of it. So you can watch that and you know, why I didn't buy it, why I'm still thinking of buying it. And you're gonna, you're just gonna be surprised at what I ended up buying. I think it's funny, but I learned a lot about about myself during this challenge, about what I like to wear, what I like to buy, where I like to find inspo, about my closet. Uh, while this was going on, I documented all these feelings I was having, and I obviously documented the outfits. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I realized was that when I couldn't buy anything new clothing-wise, and I didn't buy accessories either, it made me want to play with accessories and makeup and hair a lot more. I feel like my hair and makeup were two things that I really neglected and accessories were things I really would neglect when finding inspiration. I felt like I was finding inspo for the chin down and honestly if you look back on my Instagram a lot of times when I post pictures I crop out my face and not because like I don't even like my face in the photo. I just didn't feel like it was doing anything. Sometimes I felt like my hair was ruining an outfit. I felt like you know my makeup was ruining an outfit and I feel like hair and makeup are two things that I really lacked in. So during this challenge, I at postpartum, um, I realized I started having some like curls to my hair. So I was playing with that. I was buying new product to like do my hair and makeup. I bought this like giant colorful eyeshadow kit off of Amazon and I was playing with fun colored shadows and stuff like that. Um, do I think those things are gonna stick? I think like leaning more into my hair and accessories will. Makeup, I have to get more comfortable with. I've kind of realized that maybe I look better with not so much on. I've actually like cut down on my makeup since starting the challenge, but I think I want to find more inspo, whether that's on like Pinterest, Instagram, day-to-day -day life for makeup, hair, and accessories, and not just focus on the clothes. The next thing was I didn't care if I liked my outfit that day because I knew I would have tomorrow. This was such like <laughs> a breath of fresh air, honestly, because especially since becoming pregnant, being a mom, or even like thinking back on COVID when, you know, quarantine, you had or you know, post quarantine. You'd have like some things, some events you would get to go to. You really like win all out. You would want to have the best outfit, the best hair, the best makeup, the best time. And it put a lot of pressure on those events. I kind of feel that now with being a mom because I don't go out every weekend with my friends. I don't get to see my friends that oft as often as I used to. So when I do have like plans or even take a trip to Chicago with my brother, stuff like that, I really put so much focus on my outfit because I don't normally get dressed. So with the 75 a day challenge, getting dressed every day, I would put on an outfit and you know, sometimes look at it and I'd be like, what the heck is this? I was just playing too much into it. I just didn't really care because I knew I had the next day. So that was like a good feeling. And I'm sure that's like a normal thing for normal people, but it isn't for me because I don't do anything. Next thing was asking myself, what do I like about the outfits, the color silhouette, and then repeat it with other items. So especially at the beginning when I was documenting my outfits, I'll talk about why I stopped documenting them in a little bit. When I was looking for inspo for the next day, I wasn't as much going on Pinterest or Instagram or looking at other people's outfits. I was looking at my own outfits and trying to rec recreate those outfits with other pieces. So if I had a color combo I liked, I would try to repeat it with other pieces that are similar colors or like I said, the silhouette, um, all that kind of stuff, so. That was kind of a cool thing. Honestly, go. this was at the start of the challenge I was writing these ones down. So going back and rereading them is like helping me for, you know, future outfits I'd have to come up with or stuff like that. <laughs> then in all caps, I wrote outfit repeat you loser because Again, at the beginning, I was just really excited about this whole uh, getting dressed every day. I actually started it 
January 1st. I don't think Mandy, Mandy posted it on January 2nd, but on January 1st on my own, I had made goal two goals of getting dressed every day and then not buying anything for a month. And once I saw Mandy post the 75 day challenge, I decided to, you know, elongate it to 75 days. If you're not done with the 75 day challenge, maybe that's why. But once I started having to like take photos of the outfits I was wearing every day, in my head, they were gonna go on Instagram for you guys to see, to post about them. They were gonna go in this video and I didn't want you guys to see the same outfits over and over again. And even like taking that photo, yes, I could have just taken it for myself and not posted it. I just like didn't want to. So if I was taking a photo, I felt like I had to wear a different outfit. So that's why I stopped documenting the outfits because then I started repeating outfits and I would wear the same outfit for like three days in a row because like, that's what I do. I will wear my jeans until, you know, they get dirty, they get, they need a wash. I'm not somebody who will wear my jeans one day and then wash them or, you know, other items in my closet, even sweaters, I'll wear them multiple days in a row. So with being a mom or, you know, somebody who's busy working, stuff like that, sometimes wearing the same outfit a few days in a row it's the way to go it's a way to just like take some pressure and ease off your brain I was having fun picking out outfits and when I did find an outfit I really really liked I don't want to take it off at the end of the day I mean I take it off at the end of the day but then I put it on the next day because I liked it so much I want to keep wearing it and I'm gonna do a whole video about outfit repeating so stay tuned for that because it's gonna be a little social experiment okay I didn't even realize at the time writing this that one of Mandy's rules was to organize and clean out your closet because I specifically wrote stop cleaning out your closet because I am such a purger. If I don't have space for something or if I feel like just cluttered, if you guys saw my studio right now, you'd be disgusted and not believe a word I said. I genuinely don't like keeping that much stuff. I don't think I'm a minimalist at all, but when I have too much, I purge and then I regret getting rid of things, especially if I'm getting rid of things that, you know, I didn't wear last season. I think the rule is like, if you didn't wear it for three seasons, get rid of it. I don't like that rule. Just don't get rid of your clothes if you're anything like me. I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of my clothes ever again like I used to. I have storage now. I have a house with a basement, space to keep my clothes and store them because I always end up wanting things that, you know, go out of style, that I stop wearing, that I find a new love for. I always want them back. So I just highly suggest put your things in a bin, get one of those Rubbermaid bins, put the clothes in there that you're thinking of donating and just put them away you are gonna go back through that and you're gonna want those clothes again. If you liked them at one point, you're gonna like them again. Even some of the things that I deemed like cringy of like my 2020, you know, figuring out what I like, like I know I could work them into my closet again and I would want them again. I did a whole video about styling things that I won't get rid of but don't wear anymore. And like, it made me fall in love with these pieces again. So I just don't wanna purge my closet anymore and I don't think you should either. <laughs> I'm gonna do a whole video on spring cleaning my closet even that one like I don't think I'm gonna give anything away unless it's like ill-fitting or damaged but even then I'm like just take it to like a cobbler or a seamstress get it fixed I'm done cleaning out my closet I've I regret selling so much stuff or getting rid of or donating or giving to friends like there's so many pieces that I want back in my closet and then I even think like my mom has kept so many things during this challenge and I knew I couldn't buy anything and I was feeling uninspired, I went through her closet and found so many pieces that, you know, she's never gonna wear again, but she kept and now I have, and obviously I'll never give those away. One day I hope my daughter could go through my closet and find stuff she likes. And there were so many things where I was like, Lisa, you mom, you don't have this anymore? Like, don't you remember that? And she's like, oh, I like just got rid of it. And you know, it's just a regret. Don't get rid of your thing. Okay, so I stopped taking pictures of my outfits because I felt like I couldn't be myself and was doing it for Instagram and not me. I kind of already touched on this, but I don't think you have to document everything. I think that it was a really good technique and like a way to keep yourself accountable in Mandy's rules. But for me, it just didn't work out. Um, I'm not even somebody who really like takes pictures of everything. Honestly, like I don't even have that many photos in my camera roll, which would just seem like so backwards with being like a content creator or whatever. But anytime I take a picture, it's really forced. So adding that I had to take a picture was just like adding another stress onto everything. So I think I think I got like 30 days with pictures and I guess it was like almost halfway. I decided to stop with the photos because I wasn't letting myself out for repeat. I was dressing too much for Instagram and not for myself. I felt like I couldn't even wear like sweatpants a lot and just things that I do wear day to day, but I still like try to make look 
you know, a little bit cuter. I think joggers can look cute. I think like uh, comfy clothes can look cute, but I felt like I couldn't do it on Instagram. So there's that. I know that you didn't have to post them on Instagram, but like, I felt like I was doing this challenge for you guys too, so. That was that. Then I also realized that I just don't need to get dressed every day. I think that it does depend on your lifestyle and what you're doing at that point of time. Getting dressed every day meant that I was like ruining clothes that I love so much because I have a toddler who, you know, eats avocados and eats foods that get messy and they get all over. And I was just like getting stains on all my clothes where I would have to wear them inside out or I was like just constantly wearing a robe over everything. And I was pointing even getting dressed if this is what I'm doing. So for me, I don't need to get dressed every day. I'm not going to continue getting dressed like that every day. And even as the challenge went on, my getting dressed was getting more and more lenient. I'm okay to stay in my PJs all day, some days, multiple times a week. It'll change at the next like point in my life, but right now I'm okay with that. Then this was also a giant realization. Getting dressed every day made me want to buy more because I constantly felt like I didn't have the things in my closet for the outfits I wanted to create. I felt like I was wearing my pieces so much more that I was getting sick of them. These pieces that I really didn't wear that often or I don't know, I see as often. I felt like I had to come up with new ideas, new outfits. I always talk about this with like friends and family, but when I used to do those like 50 outfit videos for spring, for summer, who's wearing 50 outfits for spring? I never have worn all of those outfits. There's just no way for how many days I get dressed in a season. I think having like, honestly like 20 outfits for a season is more than enough. And if you spread them out accordingly and don't get dressed every day, you will never feel like you're running out of outfits. Another reason I won't get dressed every day is because I don't wanna buy more. I'm very happy with my closet when I wear it in the way that feels right. Next thing I wrote was, it's refreshing not being allowed to buy anything. I don't miss it. This was February 23rd. I like having decisions already made for me. I'm too indecisive. I literally get like buyer's fatigue or choice fatigue, which is something I talked about in a past video where you just feel like you have too many choices and you end up not being able to make a choice at all. I feel this all the time when I have like an idea of so something I want in my head. I've been looking for like the perfect rounded toe ballet flat in a fun color and I find like million that are almost right but none of them are right enough to make a purchase where normally I would have bought probably like the cheap pair that isn't really correct but I'm like ah they're $30 it's okay if I don't love them I'll return them whatever and then I'll end up purchasing them and not liking them and then I will never buy the right pair and then I'll regret buying that pair you know it's just like an endless cycle because not saying I stopped online shopping I didn't I would just put things in my cart and never purchase it I have so many tabs open right now of things that I wanted to buy but then at the end of you know going on these hunts for the perfect item I was like eh, I can't buy it anyways I have to wait a month and I would just be done and honestly that's all I need I love the hunt I love finding things and then not buying them or finding something that's so perfect on like Depop or Poshmark, like, you know, a secondhand place. And you get that feeling of like, I'm never gonna find this again. I have to buy it right now. You get that feeling, but you're like, I am living by this rule right now where I can't buy anything. And then you don't buy it. It's honestly perfect. Like, <laughs> I really like it. Okay, the next thing that I realized was to not buy things that are similar. Know what you like, but when your wardrobe is missing something, you'll notice. What did I mean by this? Okay, I think what I was meaning by this was I have a lot of things that like, I like the silhouette of it. I like the feeling of it. So I buy the same thing in a different color. And I want to stop that. If I have like two pairs of low rise black baggy jeans, but you know, they have like little things that are different about them. Don't buy another pair of low rise black baggy jeans that have something a little bit different up from them because when you're putting on an outfit and you need a pair of black baggy jeans, those three are not gonna make the biggest difference in the world. What would make the biggest difference is you have a high rise pair, you have boot cut pair, you have a barrel leg pair, you have a cropped pair. The big differences are what your closet is missing when you are putting on the outfits and you're like, these are right, but they're just not, just not there. Even like having 
I have two of these like gap cardigans. One's in heather gray and one's in black. Those are so interchangeable where honestly either could go with any outfit. I do not need both of them. It would make more sense to have one that's v-neck and then one that's a crew neck or one that's baggy and one that's tight in two different colors, just like so different. I think it was like such a trend that if you like something, just like keep buying it in different colors. But now I am against that. If I'm gonna buy something, I want it to be so starkly different than what I already have in my closet because that is what's gonna fix like my outfits when I feel like, not fix my outfits, but that's what I'm gonna need when an outfit's not working is I'm gonna need something so polarizingly different, but you still like it. I hope that makes sense. Like don't buy something in neon orange if you're never gonna wear neon orange, okay? And the grand reveal. Lainey, what did you buy? You know, you talked about tabbies. I don't remember what else I talked about. Tabbies are the one that stick in my mind the most because they're expensive. And when doing this challenge, I was like, oh, I'm gonna save so much money that like I could make a big purchase like Margella tabbies at the end of it. You guys, that's just not who I am. I'm not somebody to spend $800 on a pair of shoes whether I could afford it or not. What did I buy? $18. You know who I was influenced by? Adriana here on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and everything else, Adrienne. She just did a brand deal with Dr. Scholl's for these like iconic sandals that like my mom had, my grandma had, everybody has had them. And I've been needing a pair of sandals. And the thing is, I'm so funny. I'm so big fat liar. I said I was gonna stop buying for the seasons ahead. I said I was not gonna buy something unless it was on my list for more than two weeks. Didn't list neither of those things because as soon as I knew that I could buy something, this is what I spent my money on and bought and it's not even like this was just like the start of it and then I like went on a you know shopping spree I'm trying to do this thing called the rule of five you only buy five things throughout the whole year so this is my one of five purchases that I'm gonna make the whole year I really hope it was a good one I hope they're comfy these are what I bought these little Dr. Scholl clogs with a little cherry print on them and they were $18 <laughs> and I think they're so so before we finish this video, I did want to say thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring. If you guys have never heard of Squarespace before, I'll talk a little bit about them now. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform to stand out and succeed online. Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Squarespace made building my online store a breeze. We sold out of our straw baby tees in under 10 minutes. And after we were able to see what sizes sold out first, where a majority of our website visits were from and how visitors navigated the site. With this information from our small test drop, Brandon and I are able to make the small changes to ensure our next fulfillment will be that much better. And stay tuned for our next drop and a super secret 300,000 subscriber giveaway on the site. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Use your insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits and sales are coming from, and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash Lainey Ozark to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using my code Lainey Ozark. And that's it. Thank you to Old Loser in Brooklyn or Mandy for coming out with this concept. I literally had so much fun through all of it. It was really cool. And just to see like everybody participate and talk about it, show their outfits, show the things they wanted to buy, or I'm so excited to see people's hauls of when they finish the challenge. Um, I love watching a good haul video, but I love you guys the absolute most and I'll see you in a few days. That's all. Bye.